2022, we're halfway through. We made it. Can you believe it? We've got a war, a pandemic. We've got Brexit. We're on our third prime minister. Can we fuck it up anymore? I want you to know that since 1944, there is a United Nations organization called the ICAO that deals specifically with airline aviation and cargo. There are, a matter of fact, more than five United Nations organizations out there that deal specifically with air travel, trade, cargo, tourism. Most people don't know that, and it's important to know because they're setting goals, plans, roadmaps for the future and they've been doing it since 1944. There are 193 countries that are part of this organization. And there's one I don't know if any of you have heard about. It's called CORSIA. CORSIA stands for Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Aviation. There are three phases, and we're currently in the first phase of that, which ends in 20. 24 is the end of the first phase. It's a voluntary phase, and when we began it in January 2020, the beginning of the pandemic, um, it was really interesting. It actually started a little bit before in 2019, the rollout. It was a voluntary phase, and only 66 airlines signed up to do the voluntary phase. I just looked yesterday, and now we have 117 aviation organizations that are voluntarily moving forward in the right direction under this carbon offsetting scheme. And it's, it's a little bit complicated, but Dorotea said it really nicely. It's not just sustainable fuels, it's innovations, it's offsetting, it's multiple things to get us to that future that we need to be in aviation. I always say we didn't leave the Stone Age because we ran out of stones, right? Well, I have family all over the world and business all over the world. I work for the United Nations, so I'm at every climate conference, a lot of UN events all over the world. I'm sorry, I love Greta Thunberg, and, and I know her very well, but I can't fly or ride trains everywhere in the world that I need to be to do the work that's needed to be done. So does that mean we just do everything virtually from now on? No. It means that there's a better way to do things. We don't have to wait until we've used every last bit of fossil fuels and until we run out of stones to transition to a new epoch for humanity. These were the three phases that I was talking to you about. And uh, really, we're, we're going pretty fast and furious. There are 283 international airline organizations that are part of this. And 193 countries have already signed up for it. I want to start out with three questions that are really important. I want you to ask these for yourself. What is your why? If any of you have heard of Simon Sinek, start with why his books or why university, you'll know what this means. Another word for that is what is your purpose for existing? Whether that you take that as an organization or as an individual, they need to align very closely. The second question is, what does a world that works for everyone look like for you? Not Lufthansa, not Deutsche Bank, not Bundesbank. Who, what does it look like for you specifically? And the last one is, before this decade is out, I will do what? This is the second catalog image of our planet, of Earth. It's called the blue marble. It was taken in 1972, right around Christmas time. It is a game changer. 
not only the image before Earthrise was a big change in our world, but this one as well. well. Most climate activists, environmentalists show you this for multiple reasons. They want to show you that we're no nations, no borders, no individuals on this photo. We're all on the same spaceship Earth. I want to surprise you. That's not why I'm showing it to you. I show it to you for two distinct different reasons. Can you kind of guess what they would be? The first one is I want you to feel as an integral part of this spaceship Earth. You're not a passenger. You're a crew member. You can guide the future of what happens on our planet. I want you to know that you weren't dropped off on this spaceship by another spaceship, Spaceship Germany, Spaceship America, Spaceship New Zealand. You crawled out of this earth from your mother and your mother's mother. And we crawled out of the primordial soup onto this planet. We're made up of the same things of this earth. So I want you to feel that connection that you're connected to this earth and that you can help guide its future. And the second reason I show you this is kind of a question. How do we have this image? What is this image? This image is sheer innovation. Had we not gone to the moon, to outer space, used the latest computing power, the latest technology, we wouldn't even have this image. We wouldn't even know what's going on in our world. It is sheer innovation. And that's the point in time where we're at now. We need to have sustainable innovations for purpose that transition humanity into a new epoch, a new age of sustainability. I call it the symbiocene because I want to tell you why. Every second of the day, we have thousands of satellite images, data, information looking back down on our earth that is sheer innovation, the heart blood, the pulse of what's going on on our planet. That is sheer innovation. Innovations for purpose, not so that we can go live on Mars or on the moon, but that so we can live on this closed system for billions and billions of years. That small blip of time that humanity has been here on this earth, we have managed to reap some serious havoc on our world. And now we're facing all sorts of issues on our world. And so I want you to realize that through innovation, we transform our world. We change. We go to the future. And that's the point in time that we're at right now, not just Lufthansa Cargo, but all air aviation. Let's find a better way. Let's build a new infrastructure to get us to transition to that future that is much more sustainable. We didn't receive an operating manual for this spaceship Earth when we got here. But this is our Buckminster Fuller. He wrote a book called Operating a Manual for Spaceship Earth. That is so vital because in the very beginning of this book, he wrote down his why. And you remember the question I just asked you? This is his why, and it's on the inside cover of this book, the operating manual for Spaceship Earth. And his why is to make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest possible time through spontaneous cooperation without the ecological offense or disadvantage of anyone. He wrote this book in 1968. And he talked about it years before Simon Sinek was even around. And his why was one for all humanity. Now I'm not saying he's the guru or the prophet, but what a visionary who was also an architect who's trying to show us there's different ways to create the future. 
better futures. I'm a sustainable development goal advocate. This is my version of the sustainable development goals. The reason I have them around the earth is because they are a people planet protection plan. They're an insurance plan for humanity. And really, this is the way we should look at them. I also wrote the Sustainable Development Goal Manifesto for the United Nations, which is really important because I'm going to read it to you now, and I want you to kind of either close your eyes, but more importantly, envision yourself standing in a future December 2030, having achieved every one of these goals, what would it feel like to you? What would it feel like to you as an organization? Imagine a world where there is no poverty and zero hunger. We have good health and well-being, quality education, and full gender equality everywhere. There is clean water and sanitation for everyone. Affordable and clean energy has created decent work and sustainable economic growth. Our prosperity is fueled by investments in resilient industry, infrastructure, innovation and infrastructure, and that has reduced inequalities. We live in sustainable cities and communities, and responsible consumption and production has healed our planet. Climate action has stopped and reversed the warming of our planet and we have flourishing life below water and abundant, diverse life on land. We enjoy peace and justice through strong institutions and have built long-term partnerships for the goals. I don't know about you. Boy, I want to live in that future. That sounds great. Part of the problem is when we were presented with the sustainable development goals, we don't know what they're for, who they're for. We think, are they for businesses? Are they for countries? Who are they for? I want you to know they're for each and every one of you. They are like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They're humanity's basic needs. And if we don't solve for them and create that future, boy, our future is going to look pretty bleak. They are an entirely new economic system a new economic model that paved the way for ESG, paved the way for many of the things that we're talking about here today and where we need to go for the future. Around the world, people are waking up. They know we need change, and not just at the edges. We need to change our systems, not just our straws. But the question remains, how does change happen? In the face of these mounting crises, it can feel hopeless, but it shouldn't. Because there is a blueprint for change, buried deep in nature. It's a story of transformation, encoded at the deepest level of being. The imaginal cell. A cell that contains within it a vision of something new, of something better. The caterpillar, while alive, consumes. But this cannot go on forever. Everything has an end. Everything has a tipping point. All that is left is decay. But from this place of darkness, something new can be born. At first, the caterpillar fights this new presence. What we want is more learning in schools and less activism. Seeing it as a threat, clinging to its old form. But the imaginal cells persist in spite of this. They begin to emit a common frequency. They cluster. They form collectives, until eventually they reach a critical mass. They can no longer be opposed. In time, the old yields to the new, and something beautiful emerges. So know this. The future is not foreclosed. Alternative worlds are possible. A world where hope matters more than despair. A world where care matters more than profit. A world where solidarity matters more than self-interest. Change can happen, and change is coming. Are you in? This is the golden rule. Treat others and the planet as you wish to be treated. That's very similar to what we're seeing in the manifesto of the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, there is a metamorphosis going on right now in many industries, but specifically in cargo and in trade. 
There is this cargo as usual, there's a transition, and then there's a transformation. And it goes through a process. Most people don't understand that the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, in order to achieve them, in order to achieve the Paris Agreement, need six major transformations. Those six major transformations have been around way before the Sustainable Development Goals. They've always been there. The one that most of you are probably familiar with is the digital transformation, the digital transition, which many of us are still trying to go through and get up to speed with our exponentially growing world, with our technology of the future. Um, some of those areas, if we look at the old Sputnik rockets, if we look at the space shuttle compared to the new SpaceX and the new rockets of the future, boy, there's not a lot of going on in there. They're pretty advanced technology, almost autonomous. Same with vehicles. And there's this metamorphosis that, that goes on. I want you to know there's a difference between a project and change. So Fry to Fly, Corsia, it's not a project. It's not change. It needs to be a transformation. And I'll tell you why. Because if it's change, well, I can grow a beard and then decide to shave it off. I can go on a diet and change my habits, but then when I'm faced with that cheeseburger or that box of cookies, I can break that diet. That's change. That's a project. It has a start. It has an end. It could be successful. It could not be successful. But innovations for purpose that solve human suffering and global grand challenges that have a real, really true meaning and depth and substance to them they go through a process of transformation and transition. It's like a butterfly. Once that butterfly and caterpillar has emerged out of that chrysalis, there's no going back. There's, that butterfly can't go back. You've opened up a door that can no longer be shut. You're in a new epoch of humanity. And these are the six transformations that the world needs to go through to reach the sustainable development goals. Obviously, I mentioned the digital transformation. There's education, there's health and well-being, energy decarbonization, sustainable food, land and water, and sustainable cities and communities. And all the sustainable development goals are tied to those six major transformations. There was a great book that came out in 2020 from Mark Jacobson. Um, 100% clean, renewable energy, and storage for everything. Yet, we still have tons of debate and discussion going on in our world. Is it possible? Can we do the clean technology revolution? Absolutely. Here's another book, a couple of books. Energy and Civilization History, Vaclav Smil. It is possible. If you know anything about big history, transformations, and transitions of humanity, there is a process to go through. One of these other organizations is the IATA organization. They talk about where we're at and what we're, what we're doing and how we get to a revolution to transform in the aviation industry. So what I'm trying to tell you is that please don't think that we're just reinventing the wheel today here at Lufthansa Cargo. These discussions have been going on globally for a long time. I'm sorry if you haven't heard about them, but we've really fucked up, messed up, because we haven't got the message out to you um, that it's time to get on board and move to the new thing. We talked a little bit about the EU ESG taxonomy. A lot of people don't know what that is. It's a little bit confusing. There are six pillars. There are six main environmental objectives. But the main proof and pudding for each of you that is vital to know is that anyone who's already developed the sustainable development goals in their business model, who has done ESG in their organization model, during a pandemic, during Brexit, during the Ukraine, those organizations, profit or not profit, or around the world, 
have all outperformed their conventional counterparts. On the Morning Star Review, in the beginning of 2020, 25 out of 28 outperformed their conventional counterparts. Today, 28 out of 28 on the Morning Star Review have all outperformed financially and better as an organization in a pandemic, in an org uh, economic downturn, better than their counterparts because it's a better model to do things. It's back to that same thing. Let's not wait till we run out of stones to change our model. And then the three scopes were already talked about. We've talked about getting to net carbon emission by 2050. It's not just the air travel that needs to do that. There are eight major sectors that need to do that. And just so that you don't feel like we're picking or pointing fingers on air traffic, we've been misled. The oil, coal, and gas industry is not the major producer of greenhouse gas emissions, human suffering, and global grand challenges in our world. It's actually the agriculture, food, and beverage industry that's the major contributor of problems for greenhouse gas emissions, human suffering, and global grand cha challenges. And it's also, we've been led to mis misled kind of through flight shaming, through Greta Thunberg and many others, that the air travel industry is one of the biggest problems. We've done pretty good, and, and we saw it in some of the charts, how continually we've improved this industry. If you take all transportation, air cargo, mobility, trucking, shipping, and put those together, they don't even make one quarter of what agriculture, seafood, food, and beverage industry has on global greenhouse gas emissions, on human suffering, and our environmental problems. So let's, let's just put it in perspective. Yes, we have work to do. Yes, we've got a lot of transitions to go through. But I believe we're on the right track. There's one hidden factor in, in, in that as well. And that hidden factor is that if we understand the exponential function, and if we do it, we can reach that much faster. The more people start to implement those models, the more they see that they outperform any conventional model. And then that curve, just like with renewable energy, just like with solar and wind, the price point, that curve goes down that we reach an exponential curve and, and reach that much faster. Besides the ESG, there's a new thing coming out. It's called CSRD. It's a Proposal for Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. And that's going to go into effect September or October, hopefully, this year. That, just to put it in layman's term, all organizations in the EU with 500 employees or more are going to, to be required to do this reporting and it falls under the ESG directive. So that's, in Germany alone, 65,000 corporations. If you don't think it's time to get on the sustainability bandwagon to start to change your model, boy, you've been living under a rock somewhere. I don't know if you're watching the news. I, I want to go move in with you because that that's might be the dream that I'm looking for. I feel at dis-ease in this world. I feel that there's a lot of problems. Even the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission has jumped on the ESG bandwagon. And so now we've heard about the Millennium Development Goals, which were before the Sustainable Development Goals. We've heard about the Sustainable Development Goals. But did you know that our world hasn't stopped the minute we came out with the Sustainable Development Goals? We've already got plans and started work in 2019 on the goals and the roadmap that come after December 2030. And they're a project and program transformation called Resilience Frontiers. It's the Resilience Hub, it's the Resilience Lab, and that already began in 2019. And in 2030, December 2030, it's most likely that we're going to have the Resilience Development Goals after because all our systems, all our civilizations in this world need built-in resilience to move forward. This is uh, last year in Glasgow at COP26 at the Resilience Lab. 
The last thing as I wrap up and, and, and steal no more of your time is just to take you on a final journey of where humanity needs to go, where Lufthansa Cargo needs to go, where I need to go, where you need to go. We've been stuck as humanity in this egocentric view where man's at the top, not woman, I'm sorry, man's at the top and everything else is getting the, the blowback, the, the waste from that man on top. It's a bad model. We need a shift from that to an eco view where we're kind of working in harmony with the rest of our world. But I'm sorry to tell you, it doesn't stop there because that's not enough. As you see, man and woman are still not totally in sync. Even though it's an ecological view of the world, there's one more step. And that is seva. It's an old Sanskrit word which means regeneration, selfless service to life. That not only are we an integral part of humanity and all other species and our ecosystem but that we vibrantly thrive within the safe operating spaces of our planetary boundaries together. And when we change our models of our organization, no matter how many numbers or charts or graphs there are, it's possible to do. Um, we, we're on this journey. And I think we're already very close to this ecological journey, especially with all the wonderful representation here today of uh, uh, the divine feminine, but we have more to go, and I think we can make that, that journey to the symbiocene. And for those of you who have never heard that before, that comes from these books that are very old that talk about getting us from the Anthropocene to the symbiocene. Thank you so much, and I, I really hope we can achieve this.